Hi, my name is David, and I try to play guitar. I'm not very good, as you can tell. One day, I saw a video of blues great Joe Bonamassa getting very technical about his guitar amplifiers. For guitar player, that guy really knows his stuff about amps. He inspired me to learn more. But to really understand guitar amps, you need to take them apart and put them back together. I watched hundreds of videos. I read all kinds of books. From Craigslist and eBay, I bought a used soldering iron, some old voltmeters, an ancient oscilloscope, and other test gear. Eventually, I built an entire electronics lab. Now, I guess I'm sort of an amp mechanic. I fix other electronics too, and this, well, this is my journey. I figured I'd share so others can learn too. I hope you like it, and just as a disclaimer, be sure to consult an expert before working with electricity. Hey everybody, Dave the Amp Mechanic, coming to you from my amp lab in Boston, Massachusetts. It has been a long time since I recorded a video. In fact, uh, probably a year. Uh, this whole past year, 2020, has been a bit of a cluster, as everybody knows. It was COVID and uh, I just was swamped with all kinds of things, you know, related to the kids and stuff, not being in school, and I decided to sideline the video recording activity for a while. But I'm back. Uh, I don't know how frequently I'll be recording. We're still in the middle of it, so to say. It's uh, January of 2021. Uh, but I thought I would bring you um, a couple videos on some work that I'm doing right now. And that work is on, instead of an amplifier, it's my first time trying to repair a guitar. Uh, this is my American Deluxe Telecaster. It's 2014. Um, it's got the uh, N3 noiseless pickups in it and it's also got some other special electronic wizardry in it and one of the problems is is that uh, I'm getting a lot of hum from this guitar hum that I shouldn't get a because it's got the n3 noiseless pickups they're supposed to be humbuckers uh, and um, you know I was wondering whether maybe there might be a grounding problem in the guitar so that hey I could put my electronic skills to work um, I can uh, get out my digital multimeter and start testing around inside the guitar to see maybe if there was a short somewhere or something was uh, not grounded properly. In order to do that, you have to uh, take the control plate off and you have to test with your digital multimeter the different connections underneath the control plate. For example, from the pickup selector switch, which is a three-way switch, to the volume pot and to the tone pot. Also from the pickups and going through the different cavities to get to these uh, different uh, electronic components. So uh, I started to pull apart and I realized that, wait a minute, this is an American Deluxe Telecaster 2014. Not only does it have the noiseless pickups, but it also has what's called the S1 switch. Now the S1 switch or button, it's really a button, is built into the volume pot. It's separate from the, uh, you know, the electronics of the volume pot. Uh, it's, it's essentially two devices in one. But when the S1 switch interacts with the three-way pickup selector switch, you get a very uh, different setup than you normally would get with a typical Telecaster. And so I thought what I would do, because I couldn't find any information on this on, on YouTube, for example, on how to test uh, the continuity given different settings of the S1 button and the pickup selector switch, I thought I'd do a video that really goes deep on how these two things interact with one another when it's on uh, a uh, Fender Telecaster. So what I've done in the, the rest of this video, we're gonna switch over to a different mode, is you're gonna see how I take the schematic of the uh, control plate, of the, uh, the tone pot, the volume pot, the S1 button, the three-way pickup selector switch, and I trace the different uh, connections that are made depending on how you have the pickup selector switch selected and also depending on whether the uh, the S1 button is pressed in or out and I explain exactly what's going on in each of the different configurations with an eye towards the one thing that I needed to do here which was okay in this configuration where should I put my digital multimeter uh, connect connections in order to test whether there's continuity or there's no continuity, because you have to look for both in order to really diagnose the problem. So here we go, with an eye towards that uh, type of diagnosis, here's exactly how the S1 button 
interacts with a three-way selector switch on an American Deluxe Telecaster, and it should hopefully show you uh, what um, what exact nodes within the, uh, underneath the control plate you should be plugging your digital multimeter to in order to test that continuity or, for that matter, discontinuity. Okay, in order to analyze the wiring of an American Deluxe Telecaster, and for that matter, of an American Deluxe Stratocaster, the best thing to do is go get the wiring di diagrams of each of them from Fender itself. The way to do that is just go to Google and type in Fender Telecaster wiring diagram, and one of the first hits is gonna be a site that takes you to the wiring diagrams for all of the guitars that Fender makes. And uh, it's actually not just the diagrams themselves, it's the documentation of the guitars. And so it has other, when you download one of those documents, it'll come with some other things. So basically like four, a four page document describes how the guitar works, so you know, how the switches work and that kind of thing, but also shows you this wiring diagram. Now I'm showing you two diagrams here, one for the Telecaster and one for the Stratocaster. This video of course is about the Telecaster, but I wanna point out that the two diagrams are presented differently. It's, there's no standard presentation uh, with Fender. And one of the reasons is, is that on the left side here showing the Telecaster, uh, the Telecaster only has a three-way pickup selector switch. And uh, then you've got the S1 button, which is either in the up or down position. And because of that, there's only six possibilities. You have three positions of the switch and you have two positions of the S1 button. You multiply three times two, you have six total possibilities. Later in the video, we'll tell you, I'll show you how it's actually fewer than that. And then on the right side, you have the tele, the Stratocaster, which as everybody knows, has three pickups and a five-way switch, as opposed to a three-way switch in the Telecaster, five-way pickup selector switch. And then the S1 button. You have two positions on the S1 button, five positions on the, uh, on the uh, pickup selector switch, which by the way, in the Stratocaster is called the super switch. And uh, you multiply five times two, and you have 10 possibilities. So you have 10 possibilities on the Stratocaster for different wiring configurations in terms of how the, how the pickups are wired to each other and then to the output of the guitar. And then you have only six of those on the Telecaster. So Stratocaster is a lot more complicated. This video, of course, is about the Telecaster. Let's take a close look at the wiring diagram of the Telecaster and um, just talk about it for a second and then we'll move on. Now, in the video, I'm going to uh, trace the different paths that the audio takes depending on how you have the S1 button uh, pressed or unpressed and then also the where, wherever you have your three-way pickup selector switch set. The two interact with one another. The key here, and the reason I'm doing this video is because I had to fix my own Telecaster. And what you want to know is exactly what's being connected to what when you're changing the, the pickup selector switch and the S1 button in a way that you can uh, test the continuity from one place to another in the circuit with your digital multimeter. This is the key. And this is what I had to figure out myself because in trying to diagnose an electrical problem with the Telecaster, you need to know two things. Are the connections being made that should be made? And are connections being made that shouldn't be made? For example, a short circuit. And you use your digital multimeter to figure that out. And so what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be like putting the positive lead maybe on this node up here on the left side of the vertical axis of the three-way pickup selector switch. And you might be putting it uh, the other the, the the other lead of your digital multimeter over on this node on the right side to see if maybe this jumper is intact if there's anything wrong with that jumper. Now this jumper here going from that top node to this node uh, is a permanent connection. Nothing changes no matter what you've done with the S1 switch or with the pickup selector the S1 button or the pickup selector switch. But there are other connections that are going to be made where you're going to want to test and say, hey. Did that connection get made? Is there continuity there? You're gonna use your digital multimeter to, to test that, and those connections are very different depending on where the pickup selector switch is set and then where the S, whether the S1 button is in the up or down position. So that's the most important thing to think about as you go through this. What I'm The reason I'm showing you this is it's gonna teach you where to put your digital multimeter and test for continuity, but it's also 
going to teach you where to test for discontinuity because that's what you want in certain situations between certain nodes. You don't want a short circuit. Okay, one other thing I'm doing here is I'm going to wipe out things that are irrelevant. So we're going up and down here and as you can see uh, suddenly a bunch of things disappear. These are things that are going to be irrelevant for the rest of the, of the rest of the conversation. Now what is what is irrelevant? If you look on the left side of the top uh, of this vertical um, bar here, this vertical middle axis of the three-way pickup selector switch, you'll notice there's some lines that are connecting the nodes inside here. And that makes it look like they're connected when they're not. So I'm going to wipe out those lines to make sure that there's no confusion here. This white connector here, that's an actual jumper. That's a permanent thing that's in there. I'm not going to wipe that out. Now over here on the right side is a node that's not connected to anything. And I'm going to wipe that out too because it doesn't matter. If it's not connected to anything, it's even if the switch itself makes a connection between some other node and this node, it doesn't matter because there's nowhere that that connection can go to from here. So I'm going to wipe that out. If we come down to the back of the S1 button, which is also, by the way, the volume pot, same device, two things packed into one device, these dots don't matter. And also, these three uh, nodes are not connected to anything, so they don't matter. So I'm going to get rid of them. And the last thing I've done here is I've expanded the size of this particular dot, this node on the back of the S1 button. And the reason I've done that is because it's a little confusing the way they drew it. Let's go back here for a second. It's hard to tell that when this wire coming around this way, this ground wire, black ground wire, when it's coming through here, it looks like it's just a wire that's going through and comes over here, but actually it makes a pit stop right there and it's soldered there. It's like a little solder lug to which two wires are connected. So to reflect that, I made that dot a little bit bigger. All right, let's get on with it. First, I'm gonna talk about how the three-way switch works. Now, you have on either side of the three-way switch, you have what's called the hot node. That's what I'm calling it. On the left side of three-way switch, this node, this bottom node, is the hot. There's four nodes all together on either side, but this node is the hot node. On the right side, the top node is the hot node. Now what happens is, depending on where you have the switch uh, set to, it connects the hot node to one of the other three nodes that are on that side of the switch. So in this case, as you can see, we're in the, uh, we've got the hot node and it's connected to this first node going up the ladder here. Okay, that's when the pickup selector switch is in the neck position. Now, when the pickup switch is in the, ne in the neck position, it's also connecting this hot node to this bottom node here, okay? Something to keep in mind is, is that there's no connectivity inside the three-way switch between the left side and the right side. So you've like basically two banks of four nodes. Remember, I've wiped out this node. It's grayed out, the one that was here, because it's not connected to anything. But that there are four nodes on this side. So this is what happens when the pickup selector switch is in the neck position. Let's go to the bridge position. To the bridge position on the left side of the switch, it's connecting this bottom node to the top one. On the right side, I'm not showing any connection because of, it would have normally gone to that one that I eliminated, but since that's not connected to anything, I'm not gonna show it to you. It's irrelevant to how the American Deluxe tele Telecaster circuit works. So this is when the uh, pickup selector switch is in the bridge position. And as you can see, by the way, here's this red wire. That's the hot wire coming out of the bridge pickup and it's going right to that node. So that makes a lot of sense. When the three-way pickup selector switch is in the middle position, essentially it's connecting the hot node to the middle of the other three nodes. That makes a lot of sense. And then over on this side, it's connecting the uh, the hot node to also to the middle of the three nodes. Remember, this other node is grayed out. So that's what this blue line here is showing, the hot node to the middle of the other three nodes. So that's pretty simple. That, basically shows you how the switch works. And if you've got your digital multimeter out, at the very least, you can be testing this connectivity to make sure it works, to make sure the switch is working properly and make sure there's no problem with the switch itself. 
Now let's talk about the S1 button. This is what the S1, the circuit board on the back of the S1 button looks like. And let's go back to it for a second. Here's the S1 button. It's colorized in this diagram, and here it's in black and white. Now remember what I said earlier, you know, this is two devices in one. It's the S1 button, and it's also the volume pot. Internal to the device, there's no connection between the two. The two are actually independent of each other. So you've got a button that's completely separate from the pot itself, from the, the knob that controls the volume of the guitar, the output. And basically, what happens is when you press the button and you leave it in the, either the up position or the down position, it's making some connections internally between these nodes, these, these banks of nodes. The middle node in each bank is always being connected to one of the nodes around it. That's basically what's happening, and I'm going to show you how that works. These are the tabs of the volume pot, right? And uh, you've basically got the um, all the hot audio coming from any of the pickups is going to come into this tab. Then when you attenuate the signal by turning the volume knob, it's going to impact, uh, it's going to go out of the middle tab. And as you're going to see, this is a ground tab. In the Telecaster wiring diagram, they don't provide any key or numbering to these nodes. However, I'm just showing you here that in the Stratocaster diagram, they number them. And this is because, as I said earlier, the Stratocaster is much more complicated. And to map the different nodes to wherever they go within the guitar, you know, to a pickup or to, uh, to the switch, to, to a certain part, a uh, certain node on the five-way super switch, um, they needed to provide a key for each of the different nodes on the back of the of the switch. So this is how Fender numbers the the different nodes on the back of the S1 button when it when it needs to do that. When the button is in the up position internal to the switch, this is how the nodes are being connected. And when it's in the down position, this is how they're connected. It's just the opposite. So basically, all you're doing is you're flipping back and forth between these two positions when you're when, when you're when you're um, switching the button between the up and down position. This is the down position. That's the up position. Back and forth. And so you can imagine how if you've got wires connected to these nodes on the circuit board that's on the back of the S1 button, it's going to essentially change the the path of the circuit. So now let's come back to the diagram of the Telecaster itself now that you understand exactly how the three-way switch works and how the S1 button works because the interaction between the two is going to produce some very interesting configurations. Now the one last thing I want to do here is I want to get some wires out of the way or I want to discuss them at the front end of the discussion because I'm not going to discuss them again for the rest of the conversation. They are wires that have no bearing on anything uh, once we're, we're on our way. So the first one of these wires is coming out of the neck pickup. It's this green wire and basically that green wire is connected to the frame of the pickup and it grounds the frame of the pickup and also the plate that lives between the two coils in that pickup. Remember that in an American Deluxe guitar from Fender you've got the N3 noiseless pickups and they are humbucker pickups that are stacked where the coils are stacked on top of each other and there's a frame around that pickup and also um, a, a, a separator that goes between the two coils and this green wire coming out of each pickup uh, is the is how that whole frame gets grounded so this wire comes down here to that node of the uh, S1 button it goes that way. Remember I said this This is a solder lug, so it kind of comes around here and goes around to uh, the, the this tab on the volume pot. And then from there, it goes down to this big massive solder lug that's on the back of the tone pot. That's essentially home plate for ground for the entire circuit of, of this guitar. Okay. Now likewise, from the uh, bridge pickup, you have the same green wire and it goes directly down to that home plate for ground. 
So this is these wires, we're not going to discuss them for the remainder of this conversation. So let's we're not going to worry about them. I can't really eliminate them from the diagram. That would have been too much work. We just want to point out that we're not going to talk about them anymore. Uh, it does nothing changes with them. Also, nothing that the, something else that doesn't change is how the tone pot interacts regardless of where the S1 button is set or where the three-way switch is set. No matter what, you've got this is your hot tab on your volume pot, and this is the line over which uh, your audio can be, your, the treble can be bled off through this capacitor. So basically you've got the audio coming down here to the tone pot, um, then when you attenuate that signal, it moves that, it's basically changing how much of that signal goes to the middle, uh, the middle tab, and then from there, it goes through the capacitor and uh, to the ground, okay? We're not going to worry about that for the rest of this conversation because it's the same no matter what. All right, so we're back at our fresh circuit. Let's talk about and trace the audio for each of the different configurations. The first configuration we're going to talk about is what happens when you have the switch in the neck position. So on the Telecaster, that means that the switch is flipped as far as you can in the direction of the neck or or or, or the uh, the headstock if you will okay and so basically what that means is is that uh, you've got these connections on the three-way switch and we're also going to have the s1 button in the down position so this is showing you how things are connected when it's in the down position we showed you that already so let's trace the circuit coming from the uh, neck pickup, you've got your hot wire. This is the audio coming in from the neck pickup. So it comes down here, goes to this node that's on the that's on the left side of the center axis of the three-way switch. Now it's going to go over this jumper. The switch itself is making connection between this node and the hot node, as I discussed earlier, so it goes that way. And it loops down to this first node, uh, to the hot node on the volume pot. And from there, goes through the volume pot based on how you have the volume pot set for some attenuation. And from there, it goes out to the output jack of the guitar. Pretty straightforward. The switch is in the neck position, picking up the audio from the neck pickup, and it's sending it straight to the output jack. However, let's point out the fact that in order for this to work, you still have the other side of the uh, of the neck pickup that needs to be connected, the ground side. So let's let's follow the ground. Okay, so the ground wire, which is the black wire, comes down all the way around here and connects to that node of the S1 button. And then here you can see this is where the S1 button plays a role. It goes up this connection here. Then it's going to go across this jumper. Then it's going to go over this other connection that's made by the, with the position of the S1 button. Then it's going to go up this place, up this wire, to that node. Go that way because of that's, that's how the three-way switch is set. Then it's going to come all the way back down here to this connection on the S1 button. And it's going to go over here and that's how it finds its way to ground. Pretty circuitous, huh? I mean, that's pretty crazy when you think about what's going on here. Not a simple connection. And now you can see how the S1 button working in conjunction with the three-way switch introduces some complexity, but also introduces a lot of variety. Like you could really play around with it and figure out different ways to connect things if you wanted to. Point being though, is this is how you get your neck only position working on the three-way selector switch. And this also emphasizes when you're doing your tests with your multimeter, if you want to test all these connections, these are the connections that you need to be looking for when that switch is in the down, the S1 button is in the down position and through and the three-way pickup selector switch is in the neck position. So that's why I'm doing these videos. I had to figure this out for myself to do my own tests. All right. Let's start over again. Let's look at what's going on when the bridge pickup is selected. And again, the S1 
button is in the up uh, is in the down position. Okay, so uh, we're we're leaving we're going through all the uh, the configurations with the S1 button in the down position. All right, so you've got your hot coming in from the bridge pickup, your hot audio signal, and it connects to that node on it connects to this node up here on the on the uh, on the pickup uh, selector switch goes around this connection again that's the connections made by the switch follows the same path that we followed before to the hot side of the volume pot and then out to the output jack again pretty straightforward we're in the bridge position so this is the bridge only position let's go ahead and look at the ground side for the uh, bridge pickup. Simple. It follows the exact same path that the other wire follows from the bridge pickup. There's, in fact, this position never changes. So we don't even have to kind of worry about that, but it's just showing you that now you've got a complete circuit going through the output jack, going and then going through the bridge pickup. So we've already got two of the six uh, possibilities, different configurations covered. Let's go to the next one. Again, we've got the S1 button in the down position. And in this case, we've got the, uh, the pickup selector switch in the middle position. So now the question is, what's going on? And the reason this is important is because if you go to, if you think about a standard Telecaster, a standard tele Telecaster, when the uh, pickup selector switch is in the middle position, normally puts the two pickups in parallel to each other. In other words, they share a connection to ground and they share a connection to the hot wire going to the output jack. So they're in parallel to one another. In the in, the, in, in an American Deluxe Telecaster with this S1 button, the whole point of the button is to be able to switch between either the, uh, the normal parallel um, uh, configuration or to put the two pickups in series with one another. That's pretty cool, right? Like now you're gonna get a different sound than you would if you had them in parallel. That's one of the big differences between an American Deluxe Telecaster and a standard Telecaster. There are a whole bunch of others. For example, you've got the noiseless N3 humbucking pickups and you've got the abalone dots and you've got uh, the locking tuners and things like that. But in terms of the circuitry, this is the key difference is that you can put the uh, bridge pickup and the uh, the neck pickup in series with each other, which is not something that you have on your standard Telecaster. Let's follow the wiring and figure out whether this is the series configuration or the parallel configuration. Okay, first we're going to look at the ground wire that goes to the uh, bridge pickup. We saw that already, so that's the ground wire, and we'll go backwards from there. So you've got the circuit going up to the uh, to the um, the bridge pickup and then from there you've got the hot coming out of the bridge pickup going over to the top node of the th of the on the right side of the center axis of the three-way switch from there it loops around to the uh, to, to, to the uh, first node uh, above uh, I'm sorry the second node the middle node uh, that, that you normally would connect the, the hot node on that side to, okay? So we're in the middle position and here's where that connection to the hot node is made. And then from there, it goes down this wire to the S1 switch. And because of where the S1, uh, the S1 button is set in the up in the down position, it goes over here. It goes across here because of that wire that hard that, that that's hard soldered to the back of the circuit board there, and then it goes down to this node. Now here's where it gets really interesting because look what else is connected to that node. What we have is we have this black wire. That's the ground side of the neck pickup. So we've got the hot lead coming out of the bridge pickup going directly into the ground side of the neck pickup. So if you haven't guessed by now, when the S1 button is in the down position 
and your and your three-way switch is in the middle position, that is when they are in series with each other. They're connected basically in a row. So let's follow that circuit. Okay, so now it went from the hot of the the hot output of the bridge pickup all the way to the ground of the neck pickup. From there, of course, you're going to come out the hot side of the neck pickup. We're going to follow the what the switch is telling it to do to connect the middle node to the hot node on the left side of the vertical axis. We're going to come down here like we always do and go out the output jack. A lot of other connections to test with the digital multimeter when you're trying to figure out if everything's working properly. But here you can see again that they're producing some pretty funky uh, paths when you've got the S1 button working uh, in conjunction with the uh, three-way pickup selector switch. Okay, so we've basically covered three possibilities so far. Bridge pickup only, neck pickup only, uh, the S1 button is in the uh, down position and then a combined uh, configuration where the bridge and neck pickups are in series with each other. Now let's change the S1 button and put it in the up position. Okay, and start. let's look at each of those different configurations. So when the S1 position is in the up position, and the pickup selector switch is in the neck position. Let's check it out. Again, you've got your hot coming out of the neck pickup. It goes to uh, the middle node of on the left side of the center axis right here. And again, it's going to go across this jumper here. Okay, it's going to go that way. It's going to go that way. Across the volume pot attenuation and out. This is exactly the same as what we saw before. Exactly the same. Okay, as when the S1 button was in the uh, in, in the um, down position. But notice that it never touches the S1 button. That's why it's exactly the same. The S1 flipping the S1 button back and forth has no bearing on this path because it's not connected to it. However, things do change on the ground side. So let's see how they figured that out got your ground coming around to the S1 button to this node on the back of the S1 button. Notice that because now this little blue line is going down this way, it's going to take a different path than before because before it went up this way. All right, let's follow it. It goes down. Connects around to the ground side of the volume pot and then to the ground lug on the back of the tone control and out. Bingo. Now, earlier I said there's six possible configurations, but guess what? Nothing really changes here. This is still the neck pickup, right? Neck only setting. Doesn't matter. The S1 button could be in either direction. As long as the three-way selector switch is in the, neck, is in the neck position, you're only gonna get the neck pickup picking up audio and sending it to the output jack. There's no difference between this and the first one I showed you. So there really aren't six possibilities here. All right, we just cut one out. It's the same. All right, now let's take a look at what happens with the bridge. Again, the only difference here between the last time and this time is that the S1 button is in the up position. Okay, we've got hot coming out of the bridge pickup. It follows this path because of how the three-way switch is set. It goes down around here, across there, out there, and you're done. Exact same path that it followed the first time around. Again, not touching any of the nodes in the back of the S1 button. So the position of the S1 button doesn't matter to this path. And then the ground path is the same. The ground path doesn't touch either the pickup selector switch or the S1 button. And it goes out that way. So now uh, with the pickup selector switch in the bridge position, you have the exact same thing as you did before. So now it's redundant and you have uh, basically two configurations to which the S1 
button has no bearing. In other words, we're going to take those two configurations out. Now we're down to only four possibilities of this original six. If you multiply the, remember we multiplied three times two. Uh, now there's only really four possibilities, and that makes sense. One possibility is neck pickup only. Another possibility is bridge pickup only. Another possibility is uh, having the neck and bridge pickup in series with each other. And the fourth possibility, and the last one we're going to cover, is when you put the two in parallel to each other. And that's the normal configuration of a Telecaster. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, here's the clean diagram. And here's the uh, pickup selector switch in the middle position. Let's follow the ground again. We've got ground coming out of the ground lug and going to the bridge pickup. Then from there, the hot lead comes out of the bridge pickup and goes to the top node on the left side of the center axis of the uh, pickup selector switch. Goes around there to the right side of the center axis of the pickup selector switch. And because of how that switch is set, it crosses up to the hot node. Comes down this way to the S1 button and then goes across this little line, the little blue line, and then it comes up here, and then it finds its own path to the hot side of the volume pot where it gets attenuated and goes out. So in some ways, this is just like the bridge pickup selection Selection normally. it's You've got a complete uh, path that comes through the bridge pickup on both the ground and the hot sides. It's almost like a bridge only pickup selection. But what you also have is this. You've got your ground lead coming out of your neck pickup, comes down from the, uh, of that blue line, let's go back to it. It comes down to the S1 button, comes down to the blue lead, and then it finds its way to ground this way. So now you've got basically both the neck pickup and the bridge pickup connected to ground on one side of them. Right, the ground side. Let's see what. Let's see the hot side of the uh, of the neck pickup. Comes down here. Now I'm, I'm not putting it in yellow. I'm putting it in red to kind of set a, a difference. So it comes out of the neck pickup over to that middle node on the left side of the center axis of the three-way selector switch. Makes this connection to the hot node, and here's where you see the shared connection to the output. Basically, what you're doing is you. You've got the same. You've got the uh, hot audio coming out of the neck pickup, joining the circuit where the hot audio came out of the bridge pickup, putting the two in parallel with one another. And here, what I do is I change the color because if you mix red and yellow, you get orange. There's the combined signal going out to the output jack of the Telecaster, and that essentially covers. All of the different configurations that you can get when you've got the S1 button in either the up or down position and then marrying that to the three different positions that you can uh, set the three-way pickup selector switch to. And again, just to reemphasize, what this does is it helps you to understand where to put your digital multimeter connections in order to see if you've got continuity between the different points of these circuits. And also, where there should not be continuity. That's really important too, because a lot of times, and especially in the case of my guitar repair, I was getting a lot of hum, and what that meant was that there was a short somewhere. And the short could have been in the circuitry. It turned out it was not in the circuitry itself, but at the end of the day, you're still gonna to wanna to test all these connections to make sure that they're right. Well, there you have it. If you didn't know how the S1 button there are my dogs. If you didn't know how the S1 button interacted with the three-way pickup selector switch on an American Deluxe Telecaster, now there's no mistake. You should know exactly how every configuration works, every permutation of where the pickup selector switch could be and how the button is either pressed in or left in the up position. Uh, I did this, of course, so that you can learn where to put the leads of your digital multimeter when you want to test the continuity or the 
discontinuity as it may be between different points in the American Deluxe circuitry. And uh, just because I had so much fun doing this, I decided to do the exact same analysis for an American Deluxe Stratocaster. Now that's very different. I think I talked about it a little bit earlier in the video, but I will be doing another video on that. If it's not posted already, it will be, so be on the lookout for that. And I'll put it in the show notes when uh, once I have it up, and up there so you can find your way to it. I'll also be posting a video, if I haven't already, uh, of the uh, repair of this Telecaster and how it worked out. What was the actual problem? Mainly what I wanted to do is break this part of that video out into a separate video. It was just made that video way too long. So in that video, of course, when I get to the point where it's time to diagnose the circuitry, that's when you can kind of break away and come back to this one if you forgot what you learned here. But at the end of the day, you know, there'll be a bunch of videos here. The video that I do that analyzes the Stratocaster circuitry is going to be done a little bit differently than this one. In that one, instead of uh, tracing over the uh, over Fender's circuit uh, diagram, I actually recreate the entire circuitry of the Stratocaster. And you'll see how I've done that. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, go ahead and press the like button. Doesn't matter to me because this is not the sort of thing that I'm ever going to make money on. I don't have nearly enough subscribers, nearly enough views. Doesn't really matter to me. I just really do this uh, to share what I have know and hopefully somebody out there will learn from it. But if you do click the like button, what it will do is it'll, uh, and the subscribe button for that matter, it, it will send a signal to Google's algorithm uh, so that when other people are searching for information on the S1 button and the uh, and the three-way pick, uh, pickup selector switch on an American Deluxe Telecaster, they'll find it. Uh, the more people that like it, the, the more it sends a, a signal to Google, hey, there might be other people looking for this. So thanks again for watching, and please leave some comments if you have any you know questions or anything like that. I hope I can answer them. All right, until next time, I'm Dave the Ant Mechanic, coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm.